Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and we are right back to where we left off to get our, our commandership. We are a commander now at level 20, and max level in this game is 50, so as you can see, we're getting <laughs> quite up there. We're almost halfway there. So, yeah, you know, it sucks that we're, we've are we only got... <laughs> we're st we've still got two more Klingon missions to do, and we're already a commander, so I mean we're gonna be uh, definitely playing the later missions of this game as a full-fledged Vice Admiral. <laughs> no question about that. But anyway, um, it's time for our commandership. Now we have been flying our lovely Constitution. We've been flying uh, of course the original Star, uh, Star Trek you know, ship you saw in the original series uh, first and then we got the um, well, basically a refit of a refit, the Enterprise A and so what comes after A, but B, it's time for Enterprise B, or, uh, well, I forgot what that ship's called all of a sudden, but, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's a, uh, it's an advanced heavy cruiser, I believe, but, uh, yeah, let's see, alright, let's go to Lieutenant Laurel, Laurel, and look at our ship options, shall we? That would be smart make this large for you all so you can see this lovely 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 ship selection program and uh, alright so go to if we select commander it'll show us only commander level ships um, it's also going to show us uh, we've got escorts cruisers science vessels and small craft in that of course you can select any of these that you want to fly this is the heavy cruiser that came with the game originally. This uh, is an original ship that, well not an original ship, but a ship that originally came with the game. Was not a sea store ship, never was a sea store ship. And uh, of course when I first played the game this is the uh, commander level ship I used. It's the um, Cheyenne. And uh, it's uh, heavy cruisers are one of the few Starfleet designs to have more than two nacelles. Cheyenne class ships fought in the Battle of Wolf 359 and you'll recognize the Stargazer name because uh, a card was on one of those ships. So, I mean, it's not a bad ship, um, but there are, there are different ships you can fly now. Um, so, I mean, obviously there's that. You've got the uh, Dakota variant of that, and that looks pretty cool. I think that's the visual theme that I used uh, when I flew it because that, that, that actually looks pretty cool to me. I like the looks of that with the four warp nacelles, this curved end here, uh, kind of like a arrow shaped uh, saucer there. Very sharp, very fast looking. I like that. And then of course you got the Stargazer, which is, um, that that also looks really good too. You can, uh, that's a good visual, uh, good visual quality on a ship there. I mean, it just looks really cool, you know. Tightly packed in the cells. Looks fast. Looks like it can get around pretty quick. So that's the heavy cruiser. Now, if you, of course, if you fly an escort, then the ship you would get here would be the heavy escort, and that is your cannon ship, you know, whatever. Akira, also known as Zephyr, Thunder Child. Thunder Child is the sea store ship. So if you're flying an escort and you want a uh, sea store escort, the uh, Thunder Child um, is definitely the one to get in the sea store. Um, I have I have flown it, and it is a pretty sweet escort. And it looks really nice. Looks pretty awesome. And of course, for the science ship, you get the uh, bubble ship, as people call it. It's a, a lot. Some people don't like it, but I, I actually got to tell you, I like it. I like this uh, bubble ship. I flew it, uh, my very first character in this game, as a science officer, and uh, it was fun. Um, and I have flown it since then as well, and it was able to make a really good build out of it. Um, you got the Olympic, you got the Hope. So it's a little more, uh, I think that looks better. And, um, Olympic Hope and Horizon. There, that, that one. This is the one I like here with the, like, see-through, uh, bubbles in it. And this, uh, pulsates in color, as you can see. If you get close to it, you'll see it's, uh, pulsating between white and blue. And it does that in space, too. So that's kind of, kind of unique. Got an animation on it. Um, so that looks really nice. Um, actually, that's not a bad science ship, I, I'll say. Um, okay, and then of course, um, 
obviously the ones with the C indicate their C store. The advanced heavy cruiser, this is the one we're going to fly. This is our um, our cruiser variant, um, being the Enterprise B, now that's a C store ship. Um, first launched in the late 23rd century, the Excelsior. That's the name. I don't know why I couldn't think of it. The Excelsior, duh. The Excelsior is one of the most distinctive ship classes in the fleet. It uh, had that transwarp drive. Um, the advanced heavy cruisers transwarp drive allows you to travel to um, travel to with the uh, some more grammar errors. The Sirius regular supply canis at no cost. The ship also comes equipped with the transwarp computer console. This console offers a passive bonus to Starship Warp Core efficiency stat, which scales with level. The transwarp computer console also reduces the recharge time of all the transwarp travel abilities. The mod can be equipped on any ship in any console slot. You may only equip one of these mods on, a, on any single ship. There's a slight chance that the transwarp drive will fail the more they overthink the play. Yeah, so it can fit. Has, I've had it fail on me rarely a couple of times. It doesn't do anything. It just doesn't work. Um, but uh, it's cool. You get the plus five power to all subsystems, transwarp drive, and transwarp drive coil. So we can transwarp to um, sectors in space with this ship. And that's really unique at this class and this level is to be able to transwarp to different sectors. And this ship allows you to do that so you can get to places a lot quicker. And of course it's the next, it's the, it was the next Enterprise. It's Enterprise B, right? So we're going to fly it because it's it's an iconic ship. And we'll keep going through. There's the they, they have a new science vessel out, the Advanced Research Science Vessel, which starts getting more of that um, Enterprise D galaxy look there. Uh, it's like a galaxy that's been cut off. <laughs> and then you've got, uh, of course we talked about this, the Thunderchild Heavy Escort uh, refit. Um, so the one we're doing is the Advanced Heavy Cruiser. And I cannot buy it. Uh, I've got to claim it in the uh, C store. I, you think I would be able to just, you know, have it there. Let's see, uh, C store. And I believe if we go to Ships, Federation Class... Um, oh, I have to... Now, this is not fair to me. I've had this... Oh, I know what happened. They've... <sighs> okay, this sucks. They uh, have they changed this in the past. Um, I actually have this ship <laughs> on my main character and other characters. I actually have this ship. And because I had already purchased it, it's on those characters, but because of the way they've changed it on new characters, I can't claim it, even though I've already purchased it in the past. So I've had it, and I've got it. In fact, I've got it on one of my uh, main characters, and he's flying it as his primary ship. I mean, it, I've, I've got it. But, it doesn't allow me to have it because uh, the way they changed it. And I don't have enough C-Store credits to buy it. <laughs> ah, this sucks. Okay, well... <clears throat> That's the ship I want to fly, though. Okay, so what we're going to do I'm not too far from it and I'm just going to go ahead and get the sea store credits and go ahead and get the ship because again I, I want you guys to see this of course you don't have to spend any money uh, just to reiterate you know you can use the heavy cruiser uh, or the heavy escort or the research science vessel for free so you won't you guys won't have to pay for that and uh, I could do that now but I do want to fly this because I want to show you this ship in action I want I want I want you guys to see it because it's just pretty cool and I want to fly it at this level and uh, and use this through commander so I'm going to uh, make a quick cut and uh, get the ship so um, stand by.
Okay, and we are back after that cut. I hope you guys enjoyed that. As you can see, I have got the sea store points I needed and purchased the uh, ship. So it's a heavy cruiser. We got a crew of 750 now. That means higher hull strength. We've got 26,000 hull. A shield modifier 1, base turn 8. We're going to have three 4 weapons now and three aft weapon slots and four device slots. So very nice, very nice ship. Big upgrade from what we've had. So first we're going to take the, actually, uh, now we got more slots, let's move all this stuff down. So we have more space. I am going to use that. Uh, this stuff I really want to sell, but I need to go to a vendor to sell. Um, Alright, let's first get the stuff off my ship. Okay, now that all that's done, this ship we're actually going to go ahead and um, delete so I can, because I'm not going to need it anymore. We've got, uh, well, I don't know, we've got, we got the, here's our original ship we started with, and here's the one that we uh, just had. Of course, there's my shuttle. There is uh, our new ship right there, so we're going to set that as current. It's the Stockholm. So we had USS died quickly, USS die harder. Maybe you guys can give me a suggestion on uh, what to name this ship. And I will certainly do that. Alright, so. Let's look at what we've got here now on this ship. Um, so we've got three engineering console slots, only one science, two tactical, but we've got three... Uh, slots up here now for weapons which is nice and three in the back so we're gonna have a torp in the front a torp in the back and <clears throat> two beams fore and aft and that is going to be really sweet so much better than what we had before so much better now this is the console that gives us the transwarp capabilities uh, so I am going to keep that on there, and I'll keep it in the engineering since we have uh, three uh, slots there. Since we have more there, I'll go ahead and leave it there. Okay, um, definitely going to go ahead and use our Jim Hadar set, even though they're Mark IV and not Mark VI. Now we can replay those missions and get it, but remember I said before that if I did that, it's just going to add an incredible amount of skill points and level us up even way faster and we don't really need to do that so we're probably just gonna go ahead and stick with the mark four on this ship and I, I honestly think we're gonna be okay with that we'll see what happens but uh, we'll start with the mark four <clears throat> I don't want to replay anything I don't have to now when we get to captain I probably will do some because at that point we'll be way behind um, let's see, alright, so, now we do have those auto-leveling phasers, and just because I don't have anything else right now, I'm going to go ahead and put them on. I know I said I was going to go with a Polaron build, uh, that means I'm going to have to replay the, those Jim Hadar missions that give that as a weapon uh, to put that on here. And even then, I'm not quite sure, because, I mean, again, it's just going to give us more skill points and level us up a couple of spaces, and I'm just, I'm not sure if that's really what we need to do. You know, we've got all the uh, main storyline missions to go through, so, <clears throat> I don't know, I may not do that, to be honest with you, because I, I think it's kind of unfair. I mean, we'll, we'll level up and, and uh, won't get through the missions, you know? So, I don't know. Definitely want to have that there. I want to have... This was that uh, ionized gas sensor. I never really found a use for it. I'll keep it in my inventory, but 
Uh, I don't think I really need that ability, to be honest with you. Um... I think I want to sell all that and then get the rest through uh, the exchange. Um, I'll probably just go ahead and get some regular weaponry on here. Maybe go ahead and just buy the Polaron weapons instead of replaying the mission. So that way I have them, but um, I won't have gone up you know, a couple of ranks doing that. It'll take a little EC, but that's no biggie. Uh, and on myself, I'm going to keep my current, you know, shield and armor setup that I have and weapon setup because I like it. So I'm not really going to change any of this out. I'll, I'll get a new kit, but I'm not going to change, you know, my weapons and stuff because I actually like the setup I have right now. And it's actually uh, fine, even at Commander. It's good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and sell that shield right there. We'll take that out won't need these weapons anymore. I don't need that weapon. That's the Tribble and that. So that'll clear up some space. So let's go sell that stuff really quick. Oh, actually, since we're still in this room, let's uh, look at the... Uh... Whoa, how did I end up inside there? <clears throat> so this is what the ship looks like um, by default. This is the Excelsior. You only got one template, so... Uh, no other templates come with it. Um, can change some stuff though. The uh, you can do Excelsior or Excelsior Alpha. Nice cells, so you can do that or that. <laughs> Gray or blue. Um, I'll just use the regular template it came with, and uh, we'll leave it at that default template. And uh, you can add uh, patterns to it like to the uh, saucer here. You can see the different patterns and you can change the color. So you can do that. It, it doesn't come with any by default. So again, I'm just going to leave it on default. Um, and we're going to have the Jem'Hadar shield on anyway, so that's going to change the look of the ship anyways. So let's just, we'll just, we'll just I'm just going to leave all that alone for right now. There's really no need to change anything. Can, but uh, for what I'm doing, or since I got the Gem Hadar stuff on, I'll just leave it at uh, default. If I have any trouble in missions, uh, I'll, I'll upgrade a weapon or something if I need to, but I don't think I will because, um, you know, I've got a pretty good uh, bridge crew, pretty good away team set up, you know, with all the special abilities and everything. And um, I might can upgrade their weapons, but other than that, you know, I, I think I'm going to be pretty good with Mark IV stuff, even at Commander. Oh, I don't know why I went to the exchange. I need to go sell that stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and turn in that DOF mission. It's getting on my nerves. There. Wrong lady. Sell, 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 sell. Sell, 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 sell. sell. Sell, 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 sell. Good. I got 2.1, almost 2.2 million energy credits. So I'm all right there. Uh, we can get rid of these phasers. So, not too bad. Let's see how much Polaron Mark VI beams are. Let's get the ship going first here. Alright, we are a commander. Let's start with rare and see how much they cost. Ship weapons. Polaron. 
color on. They might not have this uh, polar on uh, ship weapons at this level. Those are really expensive. Tetrion Plasma, Disruptor, and Phaser, but I am not seeing, uh, I don't think Polaron's available at this level. Unless you do the replay missions, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get Polaron, am I? <coughs> that sucks. So, no Polaron beam weapons, unfortunately, right now. Maybe we'll do that at Captain. Um... So, we can choose something else. Well, that's not how you spell it. Um, plasma or phaser. I think we'll just go with something that's cheap right now. Um, <clears throat> maybe plasma. See, we've already got... Well, actually, we've got phaser here. I'll just go ahead and put phaser on it. That way I can use the same tactical consoles, two phaser tactical consoles, for the most damage. And we'll go ahead and keep the auto-leveling one on there just so I don't have to, um, you know, spend resources on buying two others. So let's do a uh, phaser beam array mark 6. At least I'll have two mark 6 weapons. And let's see the uncommons. We got 88,000 or 100,000. That's pretty expensive. Really don't want to spend that much. Well, th this is better. We'll just put common ones on for now and they are at least mark 6. And of course the uh retrofits do auto level up with you as well so it's not like we're you know completely losing out on um, power there but this way at least I won't spend a whole lot of money and I do want a uh, a torpedo in the back I'd love to have another heart ping but uh, can't do that so let's just put a regular oh, let's put a, a quantum torpedo in the back And uh, again, I don't want to spend too much. We'll put, we'll do uh, forty-five thousand. So we got a quantum in the back. When I flip around, that'll do a lot of damage. And then I got a harping in the front. So pretty good torps there. And uh, not too bad on facers. It's a little mixed up, and I know it looks funky. But um, if you were playing this game through, you don't have to do that. You could, you know, replay those missions, get a level appropriate stuff and uh, you know make it all more symmetrical I guess <laughs> but this will still work this is not going to be a bad build this will still you know do us really well and uh, of course we'll get rewards we'll get you know gear like this as rewards so we can put those on as we get those rewards which will be better than what I have but starting off this is good enough you know what I'm saying it's good enough starting off alright now I want to get the um, <clears throat> tactical Duty officers, tactical. Want ship console tactical, and I'm looking at the uh, phaser relay. Looks like I'm gonna have to go with common. Ah, oh, these are so expensive, and they're only Mark V too. Hmm. Ah, oh, that sucks. There's Mark V rares, but I mean, look at the look, look at the prices on them. I really don't want to spend that much. What if we go one uh, level below that? 
No, I said uh, Lieutenant Commander. Those are expensive when they're rare. Oh, those are expensive too. Dang it. Guess I should have kept the one I had instead of selling it. There's another one though. Gosh, I forgot what it's called. I'll know it when I see it, but I can't believe I just had a brain fart and forgot what it's called. It affects beam weapons, but it's not uh, energy specific. It's cannons. I wish I could remember what it's called. That's it. Directed energy distribution. That's what I want. That might be cheaper. There's only one uncommon. And there's no... Okay, they're there. So, well, at least these are cheaper. Mark V commons, but at least they're cheaper. Why would someone put that up for a million energy credits? Seriously? That's ridiculous. Alright, well, let's just go with the common Mark Fives. Put two common Mark Fives on there. And you'll see that it's uh, plus 7.5 ener all energy damage, so it affects um, all energy, so I mean, it'll help us. But uh, not as good as I wanted, but decent enough to start off and at least a little bit cheaper. And for the science I gotta have my bio function. And this is cheap so that's not bad. Well, there's a six for someone uh, Put that for 1200 that's a steal right there. Mark 6, uncommon, for 1200 Someone wanted that to go fast. And fast it went. Alright, now for um, engineering, definitely gotta have our EPS. I cannot live without it. I'd like to have a Mark 6, but I'm not paying 200000 for it. No way. And Mark VI Rare is 90,000. Um, let's see what uh, common one costs. Ten thousand for a Mark VI common. Well, plus 35 percent for the common. The 90,000 one is plus 45 percent. Uh, I guess let's go with the common one. It's only 4,000, so it's pretty cheap. Alright, and um, we can do one more engineering thing, and because I am... Neutronium. Because I am... It might not be called Neutronium at Commander, it's called something else. Because I'm a cruiser, I want that hole thingy on here. Um, it calls itself a different name at each rank, though. I gotta find out which one is the right one that I want. Uh, no. uh, that's it, Victorium. It calls itself Victorium at Commander. So, let's look at an uncommon first. 20,000, and that's plus 10 on both. Our common Mark 6 is 
plus 8.8. .8. Well, just to save us a little money, we'll go with that. Again, some of this stuff we're probably going to get as rewards anyway, so, uh, you know, we can change stuff up then or as we need to, but it's a little mixed up right now, but this will get us, this will get us through. This will work. It's not perfect. It's not exactly, if I were going to do this exactly the way I wanted, the way I would do this would have Mark 6 Polar on here, Mark 6 Polar on here, Mark 6 Harping. Then I'd have Mark 6 Polar on here, Mark 6 Polar on here, and Mark 6 Harping. And then I would do Mark 6 here, here, here. And then I would do, um, you know, Mark 6 Rare or Uncommon uh, EPS. And then Mark 6 Uncommon Victorian. And I'd leave that. That'd be fine. And then I'd want the Phaser Relay Mark 6 Uncommon. Two of those right here. And that would be my perfect build. But that would just cost too much right now to do. And uh, I need to kind of keep an eye on that kind of thing. And I know you guys probably aren't going to have 2 billion energy credits. That was only because I got lucky, remember, with that special uh, uh, efficient Saurian that I sold. So, well, let's try to keep it on the down low here, but that's going to be good for right now. Um, stations. Don't forget to equip your stations back. Because, you know, that, that kind of stuff changes. Uh, we'll look at that in a second. Um, Alright, let's go to myself. I'm going to keep the Mark IV Jim Hadar stuff. Um, I'm going to keep my, my weapons, even though they're Mark IV. You know, this completes a set, so I get that set bonus power right here. Combat triage subroutine and other stuff that happens while you're playing. So uh, I'll keep it for that those set abilities. And um, I will look at a new kit. Would like to have a new kit now. Oh, let's look at kits. Kits. Commander, start at rare and see what we can get from there. Let's look at just engineering kits. Let's see, we've got um, support technician. Combat supply, equipment, shield, quick fix. No, no, no. Enemy neutralization. We got fuse armor, place transphasing bomb, chroniton mind barrier, weapon malfunction. No. Mm, equipment technician. No. Bunker fabrication. Uh, this I might go with for right now. Of course, I went with bunker. Um, during my initial run of the game, um, well, when I first did a, my first engineering character. And this is cool because it gives you the turrets and uh, shield and force field dome. All that stuff was more useful when the combat was slow. But now that the combat is so fast in the game, those kinds of things that just sit there don't have too much impact anymore because combat's so fast. And that's why I like the drone and the seeker drone stuff because it follows you. I don't know if you can get it at this level yet, though. And I forgot what that what those kits are called. Uh, there's bunker again, support equipment technician, bunker fab. Probably going to end up with bunker fabrication right now, and then at that way at least I can show you guys what that kit looks like because it's pretty cool. We've been using uh, this kit for so long here, so we're using uh, equipment technician right now. So something different to change things up will be nice. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be able to get my my drones and stuff that I want until Captain. But that's okay. Let's go back to the rare first. I th think it was really expensive, though. Bunker Fab, yeah, starts at 450,000, so we will not be getting the rare kits. <laughs> Let's go with the uncommon Bunker Fab. As long as it's bunk Bunker Fab Mark 6, and here we go, a whole lot cheaper. We're going to get Force Field Dome 1, Medical Generator 1, 
turret fabrication 2 and a shield generator 3. That'll be something different. Alright, let's go with that. We can go sell that now. Um, now my peoples, they're using Mark IV stuff. I don't have any other unique weapons. I have to keep the Jim Hadar weapon on me. I have to, I have to keep that equipped so that I have the set abilities. Otherwise, I'd give that to one of my bridge officers. So I'm, I want to upgrade though from this weapon because I think it's time we can start doing a little better. And. Uh, you know, I can get them uh, specialized weapons. When I get the cryo thing from the Breen mission, I can give one of them the cryo gun. Alright, let's look at personal weapons. Start with Uncommon Mark VI. I think a plasma high density beam rifle would be really nice for them to have. And it's pretty cheap too, and it'll, it'll give me Mark VI Uncommon, so. That'll be good. Uh, Borg can, uh, she can still use that. Uh, the Breen will go with the uh, same thing here. Or we can give one Tetrion and one Plasma. Start getting damage in both of those, because that does count toward the Accolade, the weapon damage. Um, your bridge officers using them does count. Twenty five thousand, though, is kind of expensive. But, uh, eh, what the hey? Let's do it. Uh, and the Jim Hadar, I forgot, he needs one too. Let's see if, uh, we can give him, uh, disruptors. We can start getting some disruptor damage. Then we'll have, uh, Tetrion, Plasma, and disruptor damage. I don't know if we've done Phaser. Oh yeah, we, of course we've done Phaser. That's Phaser. There's a high density. That's, that's Mark V, though. There we go, 1500, that's not bad. Now we got all the damage types, most of the damage types I can get a commander going on, so that's good. That'll help me a little out in, in uh, ground situations too. Make up for some of the differences. And I'm not gonna change their shield or armor yet. I'm gonna wait. I have spent a lot of money, but not as much as I could have spent. So we'll end that right there with having all my equipment. I'm gonna sell that stuff. Now let's get my stations going. Of course, my only tactical character. Now I get to have, you see, another um, tactical position here. That's good. Um, my Lieutenant Commander Engineering is gonna be my Borg, and then Engineer 1. Then my Anar. now I guess will be my Science. So. Okay. As you can see, I've got some spaces that I can fill here with new powers or uh, whatever. And in fact, I'm going to take advantage of that. Now that we have a uh, second position here for tactical, I'm going to get uh, beam overload 2 and put that here. And then probably put um, tac team for that. So let's go take care of my bridge officer powers. After all this is done, we'll beam up to my ship and see what it all looks like in space. It's always fun. Ah yes, my uh, ground stuff. So here's my uh, turret fabrication I can't use here yet. My uh, medical generator I can't use here. Here's the force field dome. Looks like that. 
It's just basically a force field dome. You can stand inside. And the shield generator, which we can't activate in here. Alright. Well, my tactical officer, what I want to do is get tax space. And for the lieutenant power, I want to do um, beam overload 2. But on tack 1. Now he has beam overload 2 there. And for his first slot, I'm going to put tack team 1. Or do I want to do a torpedo thingamajig? Uh, well, no, I guess not for now. We'll go ahead and put tack team. Yeah, we'll just do tack team for right now. What Tac Team does is uh, the benefit that I like from it is that it auto rotates your shields to uh, the shield that's uh, taking damage for 10 seconds. So it basically auto balances your shields for you um, on all sides that are taking damage. So it's a nice, a nice ability to have in a cruiser or any ship, really. <laughs> um, okay. <clears throat> and we got more options here for my engineering space too. See what lieutenant commander ability I would want. This is my Borg. And in space, it's got directed energy modulation to engineering team two, emergency power to shields one. Um, <clears throat> gotta think about this. I like reverse shield polarity. That's a nice ability to have. But um, I think I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the directed energy modulation too for right now uh, until I get a ship that has four beams. Uh, and then I can do something like shield polarity because right now this will help me with having less beams. I can cut through their shields uh, better with this. So that's not too bad, and, and she's got Engineering Team 2 still, which is good. Uh, emergency Power to Shields 1, I mean that's fine anyway, it's going to give me sh more shields. So uh, we're I think I'm okay there. Um, now I've got two more slots with my Lieutenant Engineering Station, Engineer 1. I've got in Emergency Power to Weapons 1, which I like having. But let's see if there's something else. In a cruiser, I do like having emergency power to engines because cruisers are slower, cruises turn slower, and any time or chance that I can get the ability to turn better in a cruiser, I like that. Um, so I think I'm going to go with emergency power to weapons too for engineer one for the uh, lieutenant slot and then for this slot I'm going to go with emergency power to engines one engineer to help me turn just a little bit better in the ship move around a little faster and uh, then I'll have to open up this power so I get the emergency weapons now for my science station definitely want science team two so we're going to upgrade my ANR to Science Team 2 in the Lieutenant slot. And now we can go to Ensign and change out. Now I know that I am going to be fighting the um, Romulans coming up real soon. And the Romulans love to use tractor beams. <laughs> they use tractor beams, hazard emitters. So it's either between polarized hull or hazard emitters. Both are very useful against the Romulans because they have some stuff that d does uh, radiation damage, and then they and then uh, they hit you with tractor beams a lot. Uh, so I think I'm going to start with polar polar polarized hull one, and uh, go with that first because I've got a lot of uh, heals already with engineering team and science team, my hull and my shields and all that. So I'll use the polarized hull so that I can beef up my um, hull a little bit, but uh, cut through those tractor beams so those won't affect me. <coughs> Excuse me. 
Excuse me real quick. All this talking is making me cough again. Okay. So now that all that's in place, all I basically need to do is skill my bridge officers up and promote them. So let's start with tack one. I should have some officer points now so I can put uh, tactical team one and max that out and now I can promote tack one. So now those abilities are available to me. I've got tack team one and I've got beam overload two. And I can max beam overload two of course when I get there but uh, I want to go ahead and level my other characters up. So let's next do my Borg, whom I want to promote. I, I can already promote her anyway. So I had enough spent apparently to go ahead and promote her. So now she's promoted. And now Engineering 1 would like to promote this person. Need to spend some skill points, so we'll skill up those engines. And now can promote her. And now all her space powers are available. And now let's do my Anar. And I can promote her without spending anything right now, so good. Now all their space powers are available. Which is awesome. Now their ground powers we gotta worry about. We can have three, we should be up to three slots right now, so you can see we're quite behind in a lot of these. <laughs> and I'm not sure if I gave them all the powers I wanted them to have already or not. Oops. Yeah, I have not, because my healer is not how I want her to be. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. Science ground. I want her to, um, I always like to start at the end and work, work my way down. Um, uh, which one do I usually go with? Let's see, I could do Nanite Health Monitor. This will be good in the future when we get to um, stuff like the Undine and all that, but uh, uh so we'll keep that keep with medical tricorder two here because we can't go any higher than that. I think we'll go with a nanite health. Good. When I get to that, I mean it's not going to be activated right now anyway, so, you know, doesn't matter too much. But at least she's all prepared to get there. Um, now we gotta do my other ones. Uh, Borg, you are engineering. And you have shield recharge, weapon malfunction 2, shield generator. Again, they're uh, not the powers I really want them to have, because my engineering crew are gonna be, you know, drones and stuff like that. So like down here at Commander, when we get there, she's going to do a support drone one for my Borg. That should change. Okay, and now for here... I'm going to give her phaser turrets. So basically, we're just going to have tons of turrets and drones and everything, you know, as we fight these people. It's going to be pretty awesome, <laughs> to be honest with you. We're going to be able to take them down fast. So, okay, we did that, and then... I'm 
to keep her shield recharged. I like that, them having that there. Um, let's do... That's nice, but... Uh, wouldn't it be awesome if they put down a phaser turret one, a phaser turret two, and a support drone all at once? We're just talking tons of stuff, crap going on at once. I'm gonna do it just to show y'all how awesome it can be <laughs> when they're laying down all that stuff at once. It's kind of sweet. Borg. So I mean, we're just gonna be totally, totally taking out baddies very, very easily. Okay, so I've got my healer. I got my engineer. He's laying down a bunch of crap. I got two tacks. So, let's look at Jim Hadar. Battle strategies, photon grenade, lunge, smoke. Duh, that's not how I want it. Tech, ground. And now that I have all these powers set, you see, I won't have to do this again in the future. I'll, I'll, just, I'll just have to skill them all up. But they'll be where I want them to be. I'm definitely going to do plasma grenade too. Uh, on Jim Hadar. And who was my other one that goes down with me? The Breen. Definitely gonna give uh, both of them plasma grenades. <coughs> and then... I want them also to have photon grenade too on both, but uh, okay, that's lieutenant power. So let's give them... I might do that. Yeah, let's go with suppressing fire. We'll do suppressing fire on the Jim Hadar. And we'll do... Um, Oh, let's go and do target optics on the Breen. Now, both of them, I want them to have Photon Grenade, too. And they do both have that, so that's good. And then their instant power should be Battle Strategies 1 on both of them, which they have. So there we go. So now they're set. They all have Battle Strategies 1, Photon Grenade 2, Suppressing Fire 2, Plasma Grenade 2. And uh, then this one has the same, except for target optics. So now, they have all the powers they're going to need. So now all my powers are set up, and I basically don't have to change this anymore throughout the entire game. <laughs> you know, unless I want to. So now it's just a matter of skilling them up. And I'm going to start with my healer. And that's all I can do. Now I'm out of skill points. <laughs> have to, uh... Keep playing and get some more skill points. Alright, so that's taken care of. That's my bridge officers. Everyone's in their station. Everyone's got what they need. We are completely set. Let's make sure that I have all my stuff down here. Cover shield. We don't want, don't need that. Force field dome one. See, the way I want to do this is I want to I wanna shield and then I... want to hit them with that lay down a turret I would use a dome before I use a medical generator probably won't even need it much so dome shield generator medical generator a combat triage Good, that's everything set. Yay! I'm all set and ready to go on ground. Ground is set and ready. Oh, ha, <laughs> skill up. I keep forgetting to uh, actually skill my character itself up. 
Well, that's helpful. There. Good enough for now. Alright, and let's beam up and do space. Awesome. There is our new ship. You know what? Maybe I will change the nacelles because I forgot it that uh, the uh, what you call it, the uh, Jim Hadar set changes the nacelle color to purple. So um, now I absolutely have to change it. I'm sorry. I do have to change it because I want those purple nacelles. Okay, let's go to um, Excelsior Alpha. There we go. Let's change the material type. I don't think it's going to change anything on the ship, but I just want to see real quick. Yeah, didn't really change it. But now we have purple nacelles and that looks so much better. Purple deflector dish. Purple nacelles. We are a purple looking chip. Change to my uh, weapon power mode. <laughs> Let's change my uh, auto fire. Turn that on. I like that. <clears throat> Alright, now change everything down here. All my buttons are not where I want them, that's for sure. Let's take everything off and start all over again. This is the part I hate right here, is having to redo my buttons. But I have a certain order that I like, and I'm sure everybody else does too. Alright. And a proton sweep. Special ability somewhere over there. Beam overload 2. That will be very useful. Brace for impact. Don't need that, don't need that. Directed energy modulation 2. Distribute shield power. Boom. Emergency power to engines. Emergency power to shields. Weapons. Engineering team, EPS. Erasive maneuver. That's for my fireworks on. Um. Yeah. Oh yes, rotate shield frequency. Forgot about that. That science team near, near, there. Good, 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 good. Okay, attack team. Okay, good. All right, we'll leave it like that. All right, good. That's everything. So my order of operation here is I hit my. You know, sh rotate shields as I'm going into battle. Then I do full power to weapons, attack team, hit that, hit that, and then fire. And then I'll have full power, and then I have full power to my weapons. I got attack team going when they're firing on me. Then I have the beam overload to hit them with that good first shot and directed energy modulation to punch through their shields. So I just like bang, 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 and I can fire just like that. And then I need more power. I keep my power stuff down here. I can ju juice up with my uh, power transfer there. And I can juice up with my 
uh, red matter capacitor there. Then the way I have my shields is I like to have um, my uh, shields first, anything to do with shields, and then anything to do with hull. So I have like my rotate shield frequency and then my hull heal, or my shield heal, and then my uh, other shield heal, and then my hull heal, and then my um, polar on and that special weapon. And brace for impact. And then as I'm as I'm moving, I can hit. Uh, if I hit both emergency power to engines and this at the same time, watch how fast I can go. This is pretty sweet. Hit this and this, and look at that. I can turn a lot faster. I can move pretty fast. And uh, see, I can turn full around like that with both of those and then come to bear on another ship you see so I like having both of those there and I can hit them for maximum speed and in a cruiser that you know you don't have a whole lot of it so it's important so that's why I like that everything else is going man I mean this is it so we are ready to go into battle with our new ship and see what she's made of um, which we'll have to do you know in the next video but we look at my defense now, and you can see I've got 26,000 hull. I've got... Shields aren't very good, to be honest with you. Um, shield capacity is extremely low. Um, and I don't even have that good resistance. Um, not even 10%. I mean, pretty low. But really, I'm worried about the shield capacity. That's pretty darn low. Um, so, I don't know how that's going to work out, but we'll see. I really want a Mark VI resilient shield at least, but uh, I don't know. Oh, we'll just see what happens. At least I have a lot of shield heals. I rotate shield frequency, um, the uh, science team for shield repair, and then the uh, emergency power to shield. So I've got like three shield things to help compensate for the low shield capacity. So maybe it'll be okay. So that's it. That's it, everybody. This is the Enterprise B. It is beautiful, as you can see. We'll turn off the uh, shield effects real quick, and uh, you can see what it really looks like. And the engine effects. And this is what it this, this ship would look like without these special effects on. So it's a very, very nice looking ship. Um, big nacelles it's like again it's the enterprise b it's the next step up from where we were right so it's got to be better it'll be a whole lot of fun taking her into battle and she's got transwarp if we go to transwarp here you can see i can transwarp to pycanus regulus sirius and the soul system so i can transwarp to more places now <clears throat> so yeah that's pretty much it Enable the visuals back. It's very nice, very nice. And we will be playing the next mission in the next video, and it's very fun. So I hope you stay tuned and uh, watch. See you all then.